Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and my space. For those of you who are new, thank you for clicking on. Welcome to my channel, my name is Raquel. Those of you who are returning, thank you so much for clicking on another one of my Spooky Story Sundays. <laughs> um, so just like the title, we are going to talk about this woods, this group, this grouping of woods. Now, it sits at Six Mile and Hubbard in Livonia, Michigan. The park is called Rotary Park, and right behind it is a big section of woods. Um, I haven't been there recently, but when I was 15, it was a big section of woods. So I don't know if they cut it down or cut down parts of it. I have no idea. I haven't been there in a very long time. Um, but this section of woods is said to be haunted. Screams can be heard at certain points in the night. Um, moans, laughter, um, just like any type of like, you know, noise a human can make is, is known to be heard in these woods at this, you know, during the, during the night. Um, it's haunted usually from fall to spring. It act, starts acting up in the fall and usually by the end of spring, beginning of summer, the activity dies out. One of the most common um, ghosts in these woods are two little girls that are said to have been murdered. Um, I think it was back in the 20s or 40s or 50s. I'm not sh entirely sure. Um, I might do a follow-up video and see if I can find the actual story on it. Um, but this is just rumored. But I can say that I have seen them. Um, <clears throat> Anyways, so <laughs> I had moved in to a house that was on the other side of the woods and then on the other side of a, of a big main, of a busy main road. My friend, my guy friend lived, um, not my boyfriend at the time, just my very, very, very good guy friend. He lived on the other side of the woods on the other side of six mile. So a lot of the times during the summer, because this is when I moved in, um, I would cut through the woods and to go to his house. Instead of taking the long way, which took about 25, 30 minutes, I would cut through the woods and it would take me about 15 minutes. Um, so I did this all summer and I never had a problem, never heard anything, never, you know, felt creeped out about it in the summertime. Never. And I'm that type of person that you can put me in a spot and I can tell you if there's spirits there, whether they were hiding from me or not. I don't know if, I don't know why the, the spirit activity wouldn't act up in the summer, but it just doesn't. Um, could, there could, there is a theory that maybe, you know, good energy takes, overtakes it so much in the summertime that it's not haunted. That could be something, but Anyways, and I am the type of person, <laughs> and I was when I was younger, I was very brave. I did a lot of things that, pe that people probably shouldn't do, um, mainly to impress my friends. I would get the courage to do things, and a lot of the times, you know, even before we moved, we moved to that section of Livonia, there was another section of woods that I used to go in all the time with my friends and they'd always make me go first and I'd always go first. But needless to say, I always loved the woods at night. I always loved the woods during the day. And this was like my place to be. Well, the fall time came around and I had two twin best friends that lived in my old, um, that lived in a different neighborhood. And they came over to hang out with me one night. Um, their names, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm changing them for privacy reasons, Maddie and Baby, all right? So, um, anyways, so they came over and we were gonna go to my one friend's house, to my guy friend's house. We were gonna go there. And um, it was about 11 o'clock at night and Back when I was 15, if you were caught out on the main roads past 12, you would get picked up for curfew. 
and they would take you to the police station. Well, <laughs> so we decided, I don't, I don't know why we decided, well, you know, young teens think you can do anything, right? So we decided we're going to take the long way because we had to stop at the gas station. Um, so we took the long way. It was 11 o'clock. We took the long way and we got to, um, my friend's house, you know, fairly late, probably close to midnight. And we were hanging out with him. All, all four of us were hanging out. And then we decided that we couldn't sit outside his house and he couldn't have us in because his grandmother was very, um, <laughs> didn't like people in the house. So we decided we were going to go back to my house and hang out and chill because my parents weren't home at the time. So <laughs> we decided that we were going to go back there and we walked towards the park. Now, I had the bright idea to walk through the woods. I thought it would be an amazing, you know, it'd be, we wouldn't get picked up by curfew and it'd be awesome. So we walked towards the woods and um, my guy friend, you know, he had heard that the woods were haunted, but he didn't believe in that stuff. So he didn't, he did not tell us that these woods were haunted. Um, so I had no clue about the two little girls dressed in white. I had no clue about that. So we're going up to the, um, the, the trailhead and we're about to go in. And all of a sudden I see two white, two little girls in white going, and my friends didn't see them. And they're going. Now, it has been said that these two twin girls, they're twins, and they were brutally assaulted and murdered. Um, some say they were sexually assaulted and murdered. And it's said that if you get lost in the woods, they will help you find your way out. Um, so the fact that, well... <clears throat> I did not know this. I did not know this at all when I saw them. I heard about this years later. So it kind of clicked in place for me because they were going, it was like they were standing at the trailhead and they were telling me, don't go in, don't go in. So I stop and I go, we can't go in there. And my friend BB's like, what do you mean we can't go in there? We're going to get picked up for curfew. We have to go through there. And I said, and I said, no. I have a feeling we can't go through it because they couldn't see what I was seeing. And I knew they couldn't see what I was seeing. And I felt like I was like, nope, not going, not going, not going, not going. Well, BB was very adamant that we're going to get picked up by curfew if we take the wrong way around. We're going to get seen by a cop or something like that. And at that point, when a ghost is telling you, no, don't come in, Common sense tells you, no, don't go in. So I wasn't going in. I didn't care if I got picked up by the cops. Who cares? I got busted for curfew. What's the worst thing that's going to happen to me? My parents are going to ground me. Oh, well, you know what I mean? I'd rather be grounded than go and lose my life in the woods, you know? So that was my, my, my mental process. And I was like, yep, not going in. Maddie believed me. Maddie had the same feeling. I don't know if she saw the girls. I have to ask her. Um, but she had the same feeling I did. And she was not going in those woods either. And she actually got in a fight, I think, with her sister, with BB, over going in the woods. And then the guy friend that we were, that I was, that we were all with said that you guys are all being stupid. And he's like, these woods aren't haunted. And I looked at him and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, well, there's stories about these woods being haunted and about two little girls. And as I'm looking at two little girls telling me, I had seen them at first and they had stood there. I mean, they were stood, standing there. I couldn't believe that they, that, that they couldn't see them. Um, but he, <laughs> After I started and I and I put up my fight and I said, no, I'm not going in there. He started telling me the story about these little girls. And I'm like, yep, definitely not going in there. But he started walking in and BB was like, oh, you guys are being, you guys are just being scaredy cats. And then she went in after him. I said, nope, me and Maddie walked around the big way. Now, when you walk around the long way, like I said, it takes like 20, 30 minutes. Um, you walk through the woods, it takes like 15. So <laughs> I, um, 
we ended up getting home. And when we got back to my house, they weren't there. They were not there at all. And Maddie was worried about her sister, as one should be. And I was kind of worried, too, because they should have been back. And I, t I, but I calmed her down and I said, well, maybe they, you know, backtracked, went to the gas station, you know, or something like that. I'm like, or maybe they got lost in the woods. Let's give them just a little bit longer. So we gave it about a little bit longer. Now it's two o'clock in the morning. So we're calling up friends, asking them if they've heard from BB, asking them if they've heard from this guy, friend of mine. Nobody's heard from them. So we eventually fall asleep. Okay, we eventually fall asleep. We did not want to call the cops because um, we were under the impression that maybe, okay, so maybe there was a house party somewhere. Maybe, maybe our guy friend knew of a house party. You know, we've known him for a long time and we trust him fully. So we didn't think anything fishy was going on. Um, Maddie was a little upset, a little, a little worried, but, um, we decided we were just going to go to bed and then we would call, um, BB's boyfriend in the morning because that was another thing we thought well maybe BB's boyfriend picked them up or something like that so we went to bed and we woke up at like seven or eight o'clock in the morning and they were still not back they were still not back so now we're really freaking out and we're calling everybody and um BB's boyfriend came over and said you two calm down BB's at home she got picked up for curfew last night because the, I guess they came out of the woods at a different at a different um, spot than they were supposed to. Like they got mixed up in the woods and they came out at a different spot on a different main road and they got lost and the cops saw them and picked them up and took them for curfew. So if they would have just listened to me and listened to the little girl ghost saying, do not go in that woods, they would have been fine. But you live and you learn, right? Um, BB and Maddie always, um, always trusted my intuition usually because I would all, since they know me, I would always get thing, things right. So they did tend to you know, when we were in certain situations, they did tend to listen to me a lot of times because my intuition was usually on point. My gut was usually on point. Um, so I don't know why BB didn't listen to me that night, but anyways, <laughs> so that's just my story, my personal story of that of that little area of woods. I did find some stories on um line about um this park in particular uh, let's see something about a female okay so there was a female teacher supposedly in this person's recount there was a female teacher from Livonia that hung herself in the woods and her spirit still roams the woods there um i'm not sure when this happened because i never got the sense of that when i went near or in those woods um i did go into those woods one time when they were haunted um and i walked right back out i turned around and walked right back out but i you know i didn't really explore them because um i did in the summertime and I did notice that it looked a lot different in the fall and the winter. So I can't, I can't, you know, confirm or <laughs> about this um, woman that hung herself. Let's see what else she got. Hmm. There's a lot on it. If you Google... If you Google Rotary Park, Livonia, Michigan haunted places, 
you will hear or you will see story after story of people's accounts of walking through that woods, of being in that woods. And, you know, people always say, oh, well, when you go in the woods and you feel like somebody's watching you, it's usually animals that are watching you, which is totally true. I mean, a lot of times it is animals, but then you get that creepy feeling. Now, if you're getting that creepy feeling like you're being you're being hunted, <laughs> guaranteed that's not an animal unless you have like cougars or wolves or bears or something like that within your woods. Um, I do know... And this makes me so sad. Um, the woods right down the street from where I live right now, they have started clearing them out. And it makes me so sad because there's been so many memories in, the, in those woods. But I do have a couple of tales from those woods as well. So when we first moved here, I had a Labrador a Black Lab. And I used to take her with me and I used to run the woods. Now, the first couple of times I did it, it, you know, I didn't get any eerie, creepy sensation at all. And then the last two times I did it, I got a creepy, eerie sensation, like something was watching me from the woods, right? So I decided, okay, well, I'm not going to run in the woods anymore. I'll run around the field that is next to the woods. So then that way, you know, um whatever's in the woods won't get me, you know? So that's what I did. But the one time that I went to go do it, I felt eyes, like something watching me in those woods as I ran around this thing. And my dog would go berserk. She'd stop and start barking for no apparent reason in certain directions on our path. So, you know, that right there was the first telltale sign that those woods were, there was something not right about those woods. Um, there is a huge pond that sits in the center of it. And they do say that ponds, lakes, and stuff like that are portals to the other side, to the other world. Um, there was one time, um, me and my husband, we were riding the four wheeler through there. I was on the back and he was driving me through and it was at night. Um, we had a lot of people over. And we were just taking turns going back in the woods, riding the four-wheeler through the mounds and stuff like that around the pond. And when we were going, a big plume of like, it was like mist just went right across us. But there was nobody around us. So it was, wasn't like somebody had, you know, started a bonfire or a campfire. We would have smelt the smoke. We would have smelt the campfire smell. And it was not that. And there was nobody on the side of us that we could see that could have been smoking a cigarette or out there smoking something. So um, that was kind of creepy. That was one of the another instances that I had in those woods. Another time, me and my husband took the four wheelers back there. And we have this because we used to have these little spots around the pond that we would take our we would take our kids, our kids would ride the bikes, we would ride the four-wheelers, and, you know, we would take a, cool, a little cooler of beer, and we'd have a, we'd have a beer at each, at each little spot. I think there was, let's say, one, two, three, four, five spots around the lake that we would go. And it's, you know, it's a small, it was a small pond, but it was pretty big, it was pretty big, too. I don't know how to describe it, but anyway, so we would do that every Sunday. Well, um, one night we didn't have our kids and we were bored and we thought we'd take some, you know, beer down and we'd go to our lean to, we called it the lean to tree because the tree would be like this, you know, like the pond was right there and the tree would lean like that. And then there was like mounds, like a huge hill and then the track right there. So we decided that we would go to the lean to tree and hang out and have a few. And, um, so we get there. And we're sitting there in the dark, you know, we have our flashlights, whatever, and we're just hanging out, we're chilling, you know, it's a, it, it was a new moon, so it was pretty pitch dark back there, and um, we got, we got through our first beer, and then halfway into our second beer, my husband's like, I feel like something's watching us, and now he, I, I, I have to say, he's a skeptic, he does not believe in this stuff, 
but he's like, I feel like something's watching us. And we're looking around and all of a sudden, both of our eyes, shoot, there is red eyes looking right at us, like glowing big. They were huge, big red eyes, like bigger than any cougar or any, any, um, any other like wild animal that we have around here, like the coyote. We have, we have coyotes. There is rumors of cougars, but, um, I personally never saw a cougar in this area. I did in Salem when I lived back in Salem, but, um, Salem, Michigan, but, um, I haven't seen them in this area, but even they were bigger than cougars. And we heard a deep growl, like a very deep growl. My husband's like, oh, that we got onto the four wheeler and we sped out there the opposite way. And we just racked our brains for weeks. Like, what could that have been? We never did find out what that was, but it did not sound like an animal. And its eyes were glowing red. And you hear tales of people seeing stuff in woods all the time that they think are non-human or human, you know, like humanoid. Um, I don't know what it was because it was so dark. The only thing I saw were the eyes and they were pretty high up and they were pretty big. And I heard that deep growl, but that was enough for me to decide to never go back into those woods at night again. Um, we do still go through there, uh, or we used to go through there. Now they put up no trespassing signs because they're trying to make, um, you know, those big little cookie cutter houses, like, you know, those big um, home association like type things where every, every house almost looks the same. And they're, they're going for like 300,000 or something like that. They're putting that, they're taking our, our, all of our entire woods out, which makes me so sad. And they're putting that up there because I really bonded with that woods. I really love that woods. Despite the paranormal activity that I've seen in that woods, I still bonded with that woods. And, um, yeah, but anyways, so those are some spooky wooded stories from me and um if you have any spooky stories that you would like for me to retell on my channel please um that all the information to hit me up is in the description box below just hit send me an email you can remain anonymous i will swap out the name if you need me to um other than that, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this Spooky Story Sunday. Please let me know in the comment section below as well if you have any spooky woods, woodsy stories. And what do you think that thing was with the glowing eyes that I saw in the woods? Like, what do you think that was? And do you honestly think that, or not honestly, but do you think that I'm right? Do you think those girls were going, mm-mm? Don't come in here because something was going to happen. Maybe they foresaw, uh... If we went in there, we'd get busted by curfew. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. They were known to lead people out of the woods if people got lost. So that was ju that's just my theory. I'm interested in hearing yours. And until the next time, until next Sunday for Spooky Story Sundays, I hope you all have an amazing week. Be kind to each other. Love each other. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye.